This is CBY, Christian Broadcasting of Yakima, your local Christian television station, bringing to our valley quality Christian programming for more than 40 years. Welcome today to There's Hope. My name is Phyllis Anderson, and I'm excited about the interview that I'm going to do today with Deborah Mullins. And um, if you're discouraged today, I think this is just the ticket for you because God has something special for, te- for you. My name is Phyllis Anderson, and I'm a chaplain at the Yakima County Jail. And for the last uh, 15 months, we haven't had a unit Um, But we just started this past week, and I'm excited for that. And so today, uh, Deborah was one of my students in the program. (laughs) Let me tell you a little bit about what the pod is, the Yakima County Jail God Pod. We have about 24 women in that unit, and people come there because they want to find out about God. Well, they can come for all kinds of reasons, but, uh, but many come to find out who God is. So, Deborah, I'm excited for people to hear your story, your testimony. (laughs) And your testimony is a little bit different than some Mm -hmm. uh, who end up in jail. Yeah. And um, I'm excited because some people have an opinion about who makes it to jail, Mm -hmm. but we we all probably deserve to be there at one time or another. (laughs) Yes. Not everybody goes, right? Yeah. Tell me to start with how you ended up in the Yakima County Jail. I was addicted to prescription pills. Okay. And I was um, having marital problems in my marriage. Mm -hmm. And so um, the addiction started out legit. It started out with a a serious illness. And then um, I self-medicated. I numbed all of my marital issues and problems. I just hid behind the prescription. Mm -hmm. I was kind of the closet user, Okay. going to church. you know, nobody knew the problems that we were having. It was all, you know, it was all just hid. It was just mm-hmm. all hid. And nobody seen, you know, the desperation on the inside of the home. Mm-hmm. And I think it was a couple of days prior to me going to jail. I remember being, um, going to buy a mart, being sedated with prescription pills. And I took sleeping pills on top of that. Okay. And... Apparently, I fell asleep at the wheel, and the car was going around in circles. Thank, thanks be to God, I didn't die that night, you mm-hmm. know. And they found me at the wheel, and it so happened to be my husband's cousin that found me, and he yeah, took me back home. And I think my husband was dealing with his own hurt and his mm-hmm. own pain. Mm-hmm. And um, a couple days later, um, I was on the telephone and I was talking to my sister-in-law and they were talking about having a barbecue and a and a party and stuff and 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 I had been not only self-medicating I had been drinking too Mm -hmm. on top of that Mm -hmm. Um, I said I felt so ashamed of myself Mm -hmm. you know to even go Mm -hmm. to church to lift up my hands right you know just the such the darkness that that was in the home you Mm -hmm. know and Mm -hmm. my daughter got wind of it I'm not going to go into all the drawn-out story but um, Cops were called, you know, there was some deception in it, there was some lies, and I ended up in jail. Mm-hmm. And um, Which is where the Lord wanted you to yes, be, right? <laughs> it, well, I think, you know, because I, I, I knew a lady that I used to buy pills from, mm-hmm. and I knew at this moment, Lord, if I didn't get help, I'm going to die. Mm-hmm. I'm going to die, and I didn't want my kids to see me, you know, right, look in the right. coffin and see, you know, that this was my lot, you know, and it didn't right. have to be that way. And right. I had, you know, uh, you know, I prayed and talked to the Lord. It was just such a... Uh, such, an escape for me mm-hmm. and um, to was the prescription pills was mm-hmm. and my tolerance got so higher sure. and higher and mm-hmm. higher and mm-hmm. higher I even read into Sister Alice one time buying some and mm-hmm. it was like hide you know mm-hmm. but yeah, Sister anyway, Alice was your my mentor, spiritual, your spiritual mentor mm-hmm. what you're describing is not that unusual no honestly a lot of people are addicted to prescription yes. medications 
In the and ministry. And you have to have more in the ministry. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, were you in the ministry at that time? Yes, mm -hmm. very much. My husband was associate pastor okay, uh, at that of time. the church. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, very much so. Kids went to church. Mm -hmm. um, it got to a point to where the darkness got, the mental verbal abuse got mm -hmm. so, it was not just one, it was on both. It was sure. both sides. Mm -hmm. The anger, the hurt, mm -hmm. and, and, and he handled it his way, I handled it mine. Sure. You know, we all, we, we both had to be right. You know, there was, there was just pain, mm -hmm. desperately pain in mm -hmm. both uh, cases. And mm -hmm. so anyway, I ended up in jail. Um, I remember trying everything I could to get out. <laughs> and Didn't it was work. like, and I can't, I need glasses to read. And the, the jail, the guy there that I was trying to call the Bells mom and everything, you know, I know mm -hmm. I had some money, but mm -hmm. apparently that's a whole nother story. But mm -hmm. he even gave me the glasses to take with me because I could read the Word of God. And I was like, oh my God, not that I didn't have it in my heart, right. but I could read you the Word of God. It. I needed mm -hmm. him to read. I held on to mm -hmm. those glasses forever, mm -hmm. <laughs> long story short. but So you would have been in a regular unit Mm -hmm. and then asked to come to the faith unit? Did it take very long for you to get there? I was actually, even in the midst of my brokenness, mm -hmm. in the midst of mine, I still gave God all the glory. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't his fault that I was there. He right. put every roadblock that he could to try to say, don't go down this road, don't go right. down this road. Right. And and I was like, and I, I, you just plowed through them all. Mm -hmm. And thanks be to God, you know, you say, you, it, we all deserve to be in jail. I found really some freedom in the midst of it, in the midst of the circumstances. Absolutely. And it was it was um, a dark time mm -hmm. I met there. Mm -hmm. And I, there was other women that are around and they were broken. It was like, and they were just looking to me and I'm trying to give them hope <laughs> and encourage them. You know, that God, there's a plan. And I mm -hmm. think at that time, my daughter Tasha reached out to you. Mm -hmm. It's like, please get my mama out of there. Mm -hmm. She cannot handle it in there. Get her out of there. <laughs> she you know, goes to church, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. And I was like, and I finally, it was in the decision, do I go to the God pod or do I stay in this tank, you know, to where, mm -hmm. you know, even mm -hmm. though my own life was in shambles, mm -hmm. but I, I kite it over to the God pod and, and it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. I look forward to it, Phyllis. Yeah. I look forward to the teachers coming in. Mm -hmm. It was, I remember going into there and these women looking at me and I was just broken. I just fell to the floor crying. It's like, you know what? I need help. Pray for mm -hmm. me. I'm in a desperate state. Right. And I knew to cry out to God, though, right. too. I had a right. relationship. I did. Mm -hmm. He was still my source. I but, know you did. Yes. Mm -hmm. And every time a teacher came in, it was like, oh, my God. You were God. like a sponge, actually. Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. I was like, they're just feeding um, Myra. Oh, my God. Myra was a, such a faith teacher. Mm -hmm. And it was just so much fed me at a time because when I got out, I got out homeless. Yes. Everything was gone. I was homeless. I had nowhere to go. Um, mm -hmm. I couldn't go to see my kids. And I was 17 years, you know, in a marriage to where I got out and put back on the streets. Mm -hmm. I was never on the streets, mm -hmm. but I was put out on the streets and right. I was homeless right. at that point. Mm -hmm. But all of the teachers that came in, I felt like everyone had a word for me mm -hmm. at that time, you know, and they really studied, you know, and to bring that word. Mm -hmm. But uh, Myra but God was, was such... Doing She's an awesome teacher. Oh my teacher. God, such a faith teacher to me. We have so many wonderful teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but God had more to work out in your life. God so and much more. He's still to, doing it. I know he's still doing it. And God is doing amazing things mm -hmm. in your life. Yeah. Um, I need to ask you another question. So did you and your husband get back together? Yes, five years later. It wasn't okay. right away. I knew it no, wasn't right uh -uh. away. It wasn't right away. Um, I ended up getting out of uh, jail and... Um, I remember looking at him and, and asking him, you know, he didn't, he gave me 20 bucks and told me that I said, tell the kids I love them. And I didn't know where to go. It's mm -hmm. like, where do you go? Mm -hmm. It's like, where's your life, you know, from here? And, and I, I read a scripture today where Jesus said, I'll never leave you an orphan. Mm -hmm. His promise to me is that I'm not an orphan right. to him. I'm his child, right, regardless are. of the circumstances, I'm his child. And you know what? He proved himself strong and mighty mm -hmm. to me through all the people that came along the way to encourage me, to build my faith. In that time, he seen before that I was going to get out in that situation. Mm -hmm. And he built me up mm -hmm. to say, you know what? You're not alone. And he brought strong women up alongside me mm -hmm. to um, walk the path that I did walk. Right. And you know what? And I remember calling you, you'd always tell me, 
uh, Deborah Reed Matthews hates <laughs> somebody like, shut up, Phyllis. <laughs> you, you, you got a pillow tonight. <laughs> but, but you know, once but you... But God would take care yes. of you, Matthew 6.25, I'm yes. assuming. Yes, Matthew 6.25 mm -hmm. was yours all the time because I talked to you. You know, all the mm -hmm. time was Matthew 6.25, and mm -hmm. I was like, God, I'm so much more than a bird to him. You know, yes. even Solomon's glory, he says, mm -hmm. you are so much more to me, Deborah. Yes, and he's like, I will lead and guide you. Do you trust me? It's like when you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. You didn't have nothing. Right. You know, I walked around the streets. It's like, what do I have? Actually, I had 20 bucks, and I went and bought a pack of cigarettes, to be honest with, with you. you. Okay. And I sat there on the curb thinking, where do I go from here, Lord? Mm -hmm. You can't take my faith. Right. You couldn't take any of that. I may right. have been stripped of things and, mm -hmm. to my own doing, but I still had that. And I thank God to the women that came through that God pod that helped me to build me up with my faith at this circum this time in my life to go through what I went through. I wouldn't change it. Right. I really wouldn't. I got free of so much stuff, right. you know, that was um, that was um, the darkness that you know mm -hmm. I lived in, and, that you and were the bondage. A secret. I mean, the the secret part of it had to be. Well, terrible. I quit going to church after mm -hmm. a while. I quit going to church because mm -hmm. it was like I can't worship right. in hypocrisy. And, and, and just being, living a lie. Mm -hmm. You're just living a lie. And you know, you want to stand and just scream. Mm -hmm. You know, can anybody see? This is not right, but religion kept me there. Religion is right. awful, but. Right. What we're talking about today is a relationship with the yes. Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Lord wanted with you and yeah. wants with us. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about uh, a lot of people in ministry have a lot of problems. They really do. Yeah, they really do. But we, we tend to think we have to keep them a secret. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the Lord will will strip all that yeah. uh, to give you freedom. And I know you're free today. Yeah, and, and to find out is, is even though, and then my husband and, and how God orchestrated my footsteps and put me around strong women, he actually put me back in Alessandra's life. Mm -hmm. And he led me over to where she stayed for 10 years brought me in contact with her tapings, her videos, her mm -hmm. teachings. And it was like, it was like, don't take me out of this. It, it, God was doing a work in me. Right. I met still but brought the strong women around me. And, mm -hmm. and then I ended up going, um, you know, Gail Rascola, mm -hmm. the past she at the at Open Bible Church. Mm -hmm. I ended up getting connected there mm -hmm. and I moved in with Dawn. I remember all of this, mm -hmm. this journey that mm -hmm. he, he brought me, the Denny house. And, and, I'm, and, and all the time I was like, I want my kids. I want to go home. I want, you know, all the mm -hmm. time you have that hope and, you know, my husband just kept it, you know, to be perfectly honest, it was a secret. Our marriage was still mm -hmm. a secret. Mm -hmm. um, there was so, so much pressure on his side sure. because um, two divorces filed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we, five years, I ended up uh, being separated from my husband for five years and him still associate pastor at his grandparents' church. Mm -hmm. and, and I was going to open Bible mm -hmm. and, and pastor Mike was such such a teacher to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like he always challenged you to go up higher in the things of God and mm -hmm. stuff. And it's like there was so much work I was doing and mm -hmm. and still today. And then we got we ended up, you know, buying the building. We still have challenges, sure you, you know, because mm -hmm. even the separation that we went mm -hmm. through. But now there was, so that people understand you are back together. Yes. Me and my husband are still married. Twenty five mm -hmm. years coming up on twenty six mm -hmm. years. And we are, um, we have our challenges, we mm -hmm. do, because I, I feel that even though we were separated for that five years and just a point, there were still areas we needed to work yes. on. Mm -hmm. And there were still areas, and there is today. Sure, and we, you know, mm -hmm. through adversities and challenges, we're still married. Mm -hmm. You know what? Mm -hmm. I really feel he's my soulmate, and mm -hmm. I love him. He's a good man. And, and I think it's worth the fight. I clung to that, that God would never leave me an orphan. Right. And he never will, Phyllis. Mm -hmm. he, he, his promises are true to me. Mm -hmm. And that's one of his promises. I will take care of you. An orphan is somebody that's left alone, right. you know, or that is uh, under a circumstances, lost family and mm -hmm. all of that. And he said, no, I'm father to you. Mm -hmm. I'm all in all to you, mm -hmm. Deborah. I'll be everything that you need me to be. Do you and trust he's proved me? that. He, he has, has proved that proved to you. it over and, and over, over again, again to me, even that. through adversities. Where do I go to? He's my mm -hmm. hiding place. He's mm -hmm. my shelter from the storms of life. And he puts mm -hmm. people that are strong that will encourage me. Surround yourself with people that will build you up and encourage mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. when you're going through adversities and times of trials mm -hmm. and troubles. God mm -hmm. is the one. He, he is, is his one. word too. His word is mm -hmm. a comfort to me. Mm -hmm. Prayer. He's a relationship father. Yes. 
Amen, Amen. fellas. So, that is so good. Praise that God. That is so good. <laughs> Amen. Well, so we do we do struggle. Even as believers, we struggle. Oh, my God. And yet God is still teaching us always. Yes, he always, continues fellas. to teach us. And maybe today, maybe you're in the ministry. Maybe you're a pastor. Maybe you're a pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, you struggle. And yet maybe you run across this program because you need to know that, that we all struggle. We all, in fact, I think we're all a mess, to be honest with well, you. Well, and I think sometimes being in the ministry and in the pastors that you don't feel that you can tell nobody. Right. You, you just want to keep the darkness and, or you want to hide, mm -hmm. cover up. You just don't because wanna... you're supposed to be perfect. Yes, it's because we're, we're Christians, you know, we're in mm -hmm. the, you know, we're, we're, or we're a pastor's wife mm -hmm. or we're associate or we're a teacher or we're this, we're, we're mm -hmm. that, but we're human mm -hmm. and, and, and we feel and we hurt. And mm -hmm. so God sees it and uh, secrets keep you sick. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's true. what I've always that's used true. to hear them come through that, mm -hmm. you know, pod mm -hmm. that secrets honestly do. We're not perfect. But God is the only one who perfects. Yeah, no, He is the one who who works yes. things out in us. Mm -hmm. That's it, because the Holy Spirit's perfect. Mm -hmm. There's no flaw in Him, mm -hmm. and so He uses Holy Spirit to work through us. That's true. That would imperfect the, the things true. that are inside of that us very true. that need to be fixed. You and your husband currently pastor a church. Yeah, we do. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so God has uh, brought you through those things. And I would assume you have a compassion maybe for people who have gone to jail. Oh God, yes. <laughs> oh my God, yes. And who struggle or struggle mm -hmm. with addiction, struggle with um, medications or addiction to medications because yeah. that's a huge issue today. Uh, it so much is and it so mm -hmm. much is in the um, ministry aspect it is. Mm -hmm. uh, mainly prescription pills mm -hmm. is um, and, and to identify with it. And so I can so identify with it. You know, is mm -hmm. it pain? Be careful, you know, you're mm -hmm. self-medicating because there's something that's really going on. Mm -hmm. And so um, I've gone through three surgeries, you know, and, and never, that's an area I know I can't go because mm -hmm. of, um, it will open a door, and right. you know, and, and that took me to a really dark place in my life. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. anyway. That's that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I have uh, some scriptures I feel like the Lord gave me okay. specifically for today, and I would just like to read those. Uh, Lamentations three nineteen through twenty five, um, and it's it's how we can put our hope in the Lord, and that's mm -hmm. what I hear that you did. Yeah. You put when you were in the pod, you knew the Lord was your only answer, and even after you got out and all of the things, um, not having anything, and the Lord taking care of you mm -hmm. like he does where he tells he, he's going to to take care of you and not leave you an orphan. Hey, he, can I share a little story sure, with someone? Absolutely. You remember Sarah in the Maybe. pod? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, know, I don't know if I should say a yeah, name or not. Fine. God used me in the God pod. He did, he even did. in the midst of there, even to the women that were in there the, to, to mm -hmm. hope in Christ sure. um, through adversities and through challenges. And I remember I would lay at the top at night and they would say, Deborah, tell me a story, you know, a God story, you know, mm -hmm. how God ju just would intervene in my life and how mm -hmm. he came and I would tell them stories, you right. know, that were true mm -hmm. stories. Sure. And, um, but I remember Sarah one time and her last was she came through the God pod. And, and I remember her sitting there and she, and you know, she was really, you know, in her mind, but I remember her walking around and walking around and she came to me and she said, Deborah, do you think Jesus loves me? Mm. And she had tears down her cheeks and I said, oh yes, he does. He really does love you, honey. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of all of this, he really does love you. You know, and people need to hear that. You're not so messed up that he can't fix. There's no pit so deep that he cannot reach you. Mm -hmm. It's like he really, truly loves you. And he wants to, he came to set the captives free. Yes. We were so broken in despair and stuff. And yes, we did things, but my goodness, he comes. And he says, here I am. His hand is not short that mm -hmm. he cannot reach us mm -hmm. and you know and, and that stuck with me to see that she was in a desperate spot and still to know does Jesus even care about yes. me yes. yes he does mm -hmm. look where I am he mm -hmm. cares so mm -hmm. much the Lord really caused you to be a leader in there yeah and I remember <laughs> that of how people depended on you and and you did know, know the word you had the word in yeah. you and you would tell the stories and you would yeah. give scriptures and all of those things mm -hmm. and in the process of that process of that it's interesting to me that when we give scripture out of our mouth, yeah. that that word comes back into our ears mm -hmm. and it encourages us. Yeah. 
I remember years ago when I was struggling in my marriage, and by yeah. the way, 50 years, we just, yeah, I know. We just I had know. 50 years. I know. You told me about <laughs> so, that. You shared your story with yes. me that gave me hope in mine. Exactly. And, I, and, and it still gives me hope because, yeah. like I said, we have not arrived. You know, We still have adversities None and challenges us. through None it. None of us do. But, uh, but the Lord would have somebody call me mm -hmm. that was struggling with something. Mm -hmm. And maybe I was had just had an argument or fight or who knows yeah, what, right. but I was upset. And... Uh, and I would give the scriptures to that person mm -hmm. and because they were discouraged that their husband mm -hmm. uh, didn't take the trash out or something oh, yeah. like that. And I think my Usually husband didn't come home right. last night. <laughs> right. She was in them little foxes. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, uh, but I would give the scripture and mm -hmm. as I did, then I would get off the phone and I think, I feel better. Mm -hmm. Well, why? Because the word yeah. will not return void. Yeah. And I needed to hear the word as much as I needed, mm -hmm. as this person needed to right. hear it. So, so the Lord was ministering to you even mm -hmm. when you were giving the word out. And, and it's powerful. Faith Just come powerful. by hearing. And hearing, hearing by, the, by the, word. the word of God. Exactly. Romans ten seventeen, And that's yeah. what you speak it. I yeah. mean, here. And that's why he says, meditate, roll it over, exactly. contemplate, because you, you're speaking it mm -hmm. out over Absolutely. and over. It builds up yourself. It How does. many times, like David, he's like, mm -hmm. I encouraged myself. And the, the Lord, Lord, there comes a point in time we, we have did. to encourage ourselves. We do. Um, because it's like, you're not going to be with me 24 seven. Right. I mean, right. I think even Alice hung me to sleep a, few, a couple of times. She really did. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh God. I'm so upset. She hung me, she prayed in the spirit and sang me to sleep wow. one night. And it was wow. like, I was so in despair. And so anyway, but he just, uh, but she wasn't with me all the time. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, like, and you're going to have to growing, do it. The Lord was growing you up. And exactly. that's what he does. He wants us to not I mean, there's a time when we need to depend on other people, exactly. but he wants us to depend on mm -hmm. him. So, yeah, um, so here is Lamentations 3, 19 through okay. 20. It says, how to put your hope in him. Mm -hmm. uh, look at the situa situation accurately. Mm -hmm. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I will remember them and my soul is downcast within me. So that's where you were. Yeah. Line up your thinking with what gives you hope. Mm -hmm. This and th so this is uh, verse twenty-one. Mm -hmm. This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Mm -hmm. And then learn, learn what gives hope in the midst of the situation. Yeah. And then in twenty-two it says, because of the Lord's great love, mm -hmm. we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. I Amen. love that scripture. And then we need to linger on this fact, is what you were talking about yeah. earlier. Every day, God will uh, be faithful to you. Mm -hmm. And that scripture, I love this. It's one of my favorite scriptures in uh, verse 23. It says, they are new, his mercies, his compassion never fails. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. faithfulness. Isn't right? that good? And then let the Lord fulfill you totally, not just partially. And maybe that's where you were before. Mm -hmm. You were just partially mm -hmm. um, full. You know, you had the word and yet you had all these problems. Yeah. And, and the Lord wants us to, we, he wants to, us to be complete in him. And then, um, and then the last one is lean on this truth to receive hope for your heart. It says the Lord is good to those whose hope is in him to the one who seeks him. So the Lord wants us to seek him and our hope is in mm -hmm. him. Amen. I mean, do we really have any hope? You know, I was thinking about all the things that are going on that we've mm -hmm. gone through this last year yeah. with this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And it's been such a struggle for so many. And we've been, you know, had masks mm -hmm. and all of those things that look like we may even go back to yeah. those things. Yeah, I know. But our hope isn't mm -hmm. in anything mm -hmm. but him. I had uh, totally, and I was, uh, if you read um, Jeremiah 29, 11, mm -hmm. for I know the plans I have for you. Mm -hmm. And it says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, Deborah, says yes. the Lord, and the thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a good future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray. There's the key. Go and pray, mm -hmm. he says, to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all Amen. your heart, Amen. not half-hearted. All my heart, Father God, I'm giving my life to you. And, and it's willing, surrendering my will to God's will. And that's not an easy thing because there's parts in my life mm -hmm. that, you know, this like, I don't want to surrender this part, Lord, mm -hmm. but I want to hold on to this part but not mm -hmm. give you this. But he's mm -hmm. saying, no, I want 
all your whole. Of you. That's what he said. And mm -hmm. relationship with a father, it's a discipline. You have to discipline yourself to do it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's a hard thing too. Very it's hard. like I don't want to lay down this. I wanted this, and you know, mm -hmm. really, he's a relationship father. Yes. We work in our marriages. We work with friendships. We mm -hmm. communicate, mm -hmm. and so we're in a communication with the father. Mm -hmm. So we, he knows, and we train our ear to hear him. And it's like, and before, you know, like I said, you know, in our in my relationship, in my marriage, and being in church for, you know, as many years as I was in, religion is what I can say. It's not that I'm knocking it. It's that there was, there was not a relationship. There was not the relationship there. Maybe talk, maybe this, but he's a relationship father. Yes. He wants that communication with you, mm -hmm. even if it's a, f a little bit. Just talk mm -hmm. to me. Be mm -hmm. real with me. Mm -hmm. Give me your whole heart. I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. And he knows it anyway. So, I mean, yeah. he knows your heart anyway. That's so, good. he's a relationship father. And, and I found that, you know, sometimes I don't want to give part of my, I want to hold on to this. Mm -hmm. I, I, sometimes you feel validated to carry the wrong, to carry the mm -hmm. offense. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to nurse the offense. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you this part, in my, one part in my marriage is when God told me to call my husband over to my house and ask him to forgive you. I said, mm, that's not <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that be not the Lord, because really, mm -hmm. me to ask him, mm -hmm. you know, he's the one that left me here, there, that, you know, under the circumstances. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what part did he play? He said, this isn't about him. This is about you. Mm -hmm. This is to set you free. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness gives you the ability to move forward in your Absolutely. life, Deborah. And I have found that sometimes I have faced great opposition and difficulties. Mm -hmm. And to forgive, I can only do it when I will it to the Father. Yes. Say, Father, please mm -hmm. help me with this. Mm -hmm. And He knows. I don't have to pretend nothing. He knows. Mm -hmm. Help me, Lord. Help mm -hmm. me to surrender the hurt yes. to you. Help me. I need you to heal me this. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, whatever it may be. And it's mm -hmm. like, he knows your heart anyway. He does. He's a he good does. father. And thank you for talking about that because that is one of the things that we struggle with about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, forgiveness really is a gift that the Lord gives to us. Yeah. And it really isn't about the other person. Mm -hmm. you it sets you free. You're, it sets you free. Mm -hmm. God wants to free us many, many times in the jail. Uh, girls will say, how can I let them off the hook? <laughs> Uh, because you're hooked, to the, <laughs> you're hooked to them if you don't. Yes. And the Lord wants to free us. It's yeah. about freedom. I felt like I was an onion. Yes. There, I'm this onion in jail. And then he began to take some layers. Yes. Mm -hmm. He began to show me my heart. Mm -hmm. And he still shows me it. Absolutely. And, the, and, and until I make heaven my home, he's still mm -hmm. going to reveal, you know. And I'll still go through the process. Sure. And, and, and that's just it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not it to is. interrupt you, honey. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's what he's working on all of us. Yes. And until the day that we're that the Lord either comes back for us, which I think is soon, yeah. <laughs> or uh, until he takes us home, he is working in us. And I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. uh, he works those fruits and those things in us, and he, and he, and he wants to uh, have relationship and all of those things. So I just want to encourage you today that if you're struggling in these areas, and you may say, you know, I've known the Lord for 50 years, and I've gotten away from him, and I don't think he'll, he'll allow me back. That is a lie. Th this message today should help you to know that uh, you've not gone too far. You've not done too much. God loves you. He wants relationship with you. And if he, and he wants to forgive you. If he's asking us to forgive yes. people, it's because he, he forgives. And you have to forgive yourself. Exactly. You have to you have to come to a place to where you forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. I only have control of my little world here. You know, of me. I can't mm -hmm. control others' actions. And so that's another one he's teaching me yes. as well. Yes. Today is that you can react or don't react. Mm -hmm. Move. What, and that's what I'm learning today. Mm -hmm. Even you know, I can't. You know, you have to forgive yourself. You have to Absolutely. move forward and forgive yourself. And that's big. That's big. So, so if you're struggling, even just with forgiving yourself, that's harder than anything then uh, I just ask you to pray and ask the Lord to help you to do that, and He will do that. And I add one little more thing. Yes. He also took me to the forgiveness, to go to my children. Yes. Because they were affected by choices I made. Yes. And that's where we're not islands unto ourselves. Right. I had to go to my kids and forget, you know, just that uncertainty of just being late to picking them up. And, and especially my daughter Haley, you yes. know, we're just, she's my best friend today. She cool. really is. We're mother and daughter, but she's my friend. I love her dearly. Mm -hmm. And um, I can describe because we are such a big part. So forgiveness, sometimes we just go to the Lord and say, forgive me. But no, if you're wronged, you leave it. You go to the person yes. 
and you ask him yes. to forgive you. And, and I had to do that with my children. And he will do that. Thank you, Deborah. I am so grateful for you sharing your testimony for us today. And thank you for being with us today. Uh, again, I am Chaplain Phyllis Anderson, and thank you for joining us.